Good afternoon, everyone. It's four o'clock. Time to be, time to begin our budget work session meeting. This time, and at this time, I'll call ourselves to order and recognize Lisa. Good afternoon, everyone. Exciting to present another uh, budget workshop to City Council, and uh, we can do a nice overview of what we've put together for fiscal year nineteen. Again, I'm going to follow the same structure that we did last year. That seemed to work rather well. Uh, the first part uh, covers the revenues and the funding sources. And the second part will cover all the department requests and proposed expenditure budgets. Um, we'll stop around 5.45 and recess for dinner. Our biggest revenue source, property tax revenues. A uh, nice surprise on this slide, and I mentioned this last week at the strategic meeting, our assessed valuation has grown by 5%. Um, today, we looked at some of the county records to see what was driving this. Uh, it's really spread across the board. Um, residential and commercial both went up by about 2%, and personal property actually rose um, about 10%. Um, the projection that we show for 2019 uh, does include the three cent tax increase to fund the police headquarters building that we talked about at Strategic last week. And I'll have the next slide that covers that a little bit more in depth. Are there any With questions? The, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Our three percent pretty well cut, it does cover the payment for the uh, new police department, right? It does. The very first payment for the uh, <coughs> headquarters will be just over a million dollars, and the annual property tax revenue generated from the three cents is nine hundred and eighty thousand. Um, we'll also have some operating costs from that building, and the way the payments are structured, they decline over time. So the payment will go down the next year, but we'll have to cover those operating costs. How long is our payback? Uh, 20 years is what I have it set for uh, in the estimates. Um, are there any other questions on the current property tax revenue source? <coughs> then more about a three cent increase. Um, the city's last tax increase, we had this question last week. It was in fiscal year 2011, and that year we did a five cent tax increase, and that's been the last time. Of course, we did the revaluation in fiscal year 2016, but we went to the property, new, the revenue neutral tax rate to just maintain you know, where we were at with our revenue uh, collection. Uh, the county is going to be planning for a reval in 2021. This will affect our fiscal year 22, but it's the 2021 taxes. Uh, we talked to them today and that's the information that they gave us. Uh, let's see. I wanted to um, also let you know since the tax increase is going into effect in FY19, of course, we're not gonna have debt payments due in FY19. Um, debt probably won't start until the next year. Uh, we will bank all of the money that is collected by the three cent tax increase and use that to offset the total amount that we need to borrow. It'll stay with the project, it'll go into the project in its entirety. Sales tax revenue. Uh, this is our next largest revenue stream. Um, I know, uh, Franco, you're new to council. <clears throat> the ad valorem levy that's listed there, that's how the county chooses to distribute our share of those sales tax revenues. Um, based on our percent of the total Union County, that's the amount that we get. So as our percentage increases or decreases, based on who, what tax rate we adopt, <clears throat> You know, that's how we know what we're going to be getting. We've been holding at about 8.6, 8.5% for the last three years. Um, this tax increase that will go into effect in 2019 will be reflected in 2020. There's always a year lag 
Um, so we should gain a little bit of the share of that total distribution. The county is not planning to increase their taxes this year. They're actually considering a slight decrease. So they, they said they're either going to hold the same or just slightly maybe a one cent decrease, uh, which would be nice because that would offset some of our increase. But um, that should help us increase that share of the total. So we're hoping for some positive results there. Um, this revenue stream really jumped up in 2017. You know, it all just comes to us from the Department of Revenue. We have no idea what drives that number up or down. It doesn't really follow with any of the league projections. It was just an anomaly. Uh, they, it jumped way up, but it's holding there. <coughs> Um, it's not really growing from that point, but it's staying pretty close to that level in 2017. So our projection for 2019 doesn't include any growth. It's just so volatile. We really can't get a good feel on where that'll go. Our next largest revenue stream is the utility sales tax revenue. Uh, this um, was changed back in 2015 where the general sales tax rate is applied to all utility sales to all customers. Um, all of these are collected, sent up to the state, and then distributed back to the cities much in the same way uh, the sales tax on your goods are, are handled. <coughs> um, there's tax on electric, gas, telecommunication, which is, you know, any uh, phone, cable, and then the total distribution for us is just holding like at 3.3, 3.4 million. Again, this has been a little bit volatile. It grew when they first implemented the, the change. And I think it grew for everybody across the whole state, but it really hasn't done much since then. Um, we're hoping for some better results this year with the colder wet weather. Uh, the real cold weather hit in January. So that distribution, we won't see that until June. There's quite a bit of a lag. Uh, we only get it in quarterly. So we're hoping that that'll improve the, the revenue projection, at least for this year. One too many. Another um, revenue source that we use to fund our budget is our fund balance. Uh, our unassigned fund balance, which is over the fund balance policy, the fund balance policy is 25% of budgeted expenditures, is currently just over $4.1 million. Um, our fund reserve policy amount and it is the, in addition to this, is just under 9.5 million. So this is the money that we have in our rainy day funds for any kind of emergency, um, anything that the city you know, could need. Um, the 4.1 million could be available to you know, do one-time type of programs, capital projects, uh, reducing deferred maintenance, like just you know roof repair is an example. Uh, we don't want to do anything that wouldn't have a revenue source, such as like a recurring position. Uh, we wouldn't want to fund people or anything out of this. That would be disallowed. And this is where our fund balance currently is. Uh, you can see that 4.1 million up there and unassigned. Uh, we do have some formally assigned. These are items that council has, I hate to use the word earmarked, but they're earmarked for certain uses. So we put them aside and we said, <coughs> we're gonna use airport grant acceptance. That's money, that 188,000, that's money that we can use to make grant matches for any kind of grants that may come up at the airport or a small project. Um, we also have a five year subsidy that we put aside the money for. Uh, we still have 750,000. We've been using that to infuse into the budget every year, uh, 250,000. Uh, 2019 will actually be the third year. Um, we'll be the, there'll be three years left and that 
that is one of those three years. Street resurfacing, we did the same thing in an effort to increase our street resurfacing program. Uh, we earmarked $900,000. Well, it was a little more than that then, but we infused $300,000 a year to help defray that cost. Going down, projected activity for the remainder of 2018. Uh, we do anticipate higher collections in the ad valorem tax due to the increased uh, levy. Uh, we anticipate revenue sales tax to be a little bit, be bit better than budgeted. We will recognize savings in personnel costs due to vacancies. And we'll also have uh, some savings. We budgeted for some debt service for, uh, I believe, the center theater and the senior center. Using that savings, um, follow it on down, we're proposing to use just over $2 million of that unassigned fund balance and we'll leave that balance of unassigned fund balance at $4.4 million as of July 1st. So your unassigned fund balance is going to be that $4 million less the two. Yet we're adding in all of those activity for the remainder of 2018. Then we'll take out the two and it'll leave that 4.4. Okay. So that's where we'll be to start out the new year. Of course, it could change slightly because we have to recalculate it at the end of the year. It, but that's where we anticipate being at least. One thing that's always good to see is the schedule of debt payments going forward. Uh, sometimes that creates some capacity for us uh, as debt rolls off, you know, we can bring new debt on. I did update the slide to include uh, projections for the police headquarters based on an $11.9 million project. And I also included some estimates on the projects that were approved for Center Theater and Senior Center. And uh, just showed estimates, these are 20 returns at 3.5%. So we're trying to take into consideration any of that stuff that may be rolling off. That's really all I have for the revenue sources. Are there any questions before we get on to the expense side? Uh, the expense side, uh, what I'll do is uh, provide some budget met metrics to help you as we go through the process, uh, highlight the citywide initiatives, and then we'll get into the proposed changes by department. Um, we use a base budget method of budgeting. Uh, the base budget is where uh, we strip out all the one-time purchase, pur purchases every year so that we have just the the bare bones expenditures for our recurring type of things in there. Any increases to that base budget have to be approved through this process. Um, those are the items that you'll see up on the screen. There are it, too many to put every, every little $500,000 item, but we will have everything that's non-routine or new greater than $10,000 in the slides to bring to you tonight. And then we'll discuss the remaining uh, schedule for the budget. Uh, the first metric is the relationship between debt and the tax rate. This is just a handy chart to show you how much tax is required to generate, say, you know, the, the number that we are looking at is 11.9 million for the police headquarters. If we look at the 10 million, you can see it. It's we need 2.6 cents to generate that $10 million. So that's where we can kind of do the math a little bit in your head and you know, draw the conclusion about three cents for the, for the 11.9. Based on the 2017 valuation, one cent of the tax rate generates $327,000 roughly. Uh, 
$20 million in new taxable value will generate $117,000. So you can see it takes quite a bit of taxable value to really generate you know, a good amount of revenue for the city. So for every spending increase, say uh, $100,000, a new taxable value or some you know, building in our community needs to build and add to our tax rolls and needs to be worth $17 million or we need to raise taxes by 0 0.3 cents. Now, the reason why we're here, let's see what's going on for next year. <clears throat> Citywide initiatives. In the proposed budget, we have recommended a 2% merit increase for all employees. Uh, we've also included a pay plan implementation. This is phase three and the final phase. Uh, this will get the pay plan fully implemented and uh, It'll adjust the salary grade tables and will be at market levels. Uh, the air show, of course, is included in our budget. Net of revenue uh, should only cost the city 90,000. It didn't cost us that this past year. We had such a great turnout. Uh, you know, that, that's just the worst case scenario. I think we only, it only cost us maybe around 10,000 this past year. It's, it's really great turnout, some good revenue. Outside agency funding, the total that was recommended from General Services Committee is $292,399. How's that compared to last year? Uh, last year's was right at two, like 209, 210. There was a few things that were added this year. Uh, they had one new agency. Uh, we did include 30000 in funding for utility assistance program that we didn't have in there last year. Uh, we did it during the year last year. Yep. Okay. Um, we've had an increase in economic development incentive awards. Uh, the total budget is now five, little 537000 uh, this was an increase of 227000 And we also included the debt service for the center theater and the senior center. And getting to the departments. Uh, on the slides, you'll see um, <coughs> items that have been either recommended or delayed or fee schedule changes. All of those items appear on each department. Um, for the finance department, the only uh, recommendation we had was some cleanup in the fee schedule. Uh, we wanna just change it from saying same day reconnection for folks after 12 and then after five. We really don't look at the times just to say same day connection. Um, we don't do a lot of same day connections it's very rare. Most of our connections are next day. Uh, we'll do them for extenuating circumstances. If it's sub-zero outside and we've got a small family, you know, little kids that need service today. Sometimes those we don't even charge for, so. <laughs> Engineering. Uh, the items up there are, have been re recommended for exclusion from the FY19 budget. That's uh, that parking lot across the street over there uh, at the railroad depot. Uh, equipment shelters. Uh, currently, that equipment stored in the yard. Uh, the salt and sand storage shed. Uh, this would have increased the amount that we store for winter events. And there were some personnel requests that were also excluded for street sign technician and street maintenance workers. Is that two, two? Yes, sir. Two additional people for street department. Three, actually. Two. Fine technician. Mm -hmm. Two maintenance workers and one sign technician. We're, oh. not, we're not budgeting. Sir? Yeah, we're not no. budgeting them. The, everything on the side was excluded, recommending for delay. On the parking lot resurfacing over here on Church Street, 
that's a big law in the cost of the courthouse. So yes, the county, they were just, I know we asked them one time if they, if they could help us with that. They still don't give us anything to resurface that. No. Have you had any I'm, I'm discussion? I haven't talked in the last uh, 12 months on it. Well, they use 90% of it, don't they? Mm-hmm. Okay, I know that one year we approached them about it, and I, I didn't think we ever got anything. Okay. No, nothing's ever come out of it. <clears throat> The next department, code enforcement and building standards, uh, was included or recommended for approval the licenses for the Bluebeam software that is required to interface with the new permitting software. I talked to the uh, planning department today and they anticipate going live with their new Bluebeam software by the end of the calendar year. That's moving along, they're doing all the setups uh, in the program now. Um, they have recommended uh, some fee schedule changes. We'd like to reduce the administrative fees for lot clearing and nuisance abatement cases from $150 to $75. And they'd like to add a fee for the minimum housing abatement fee. Uh, it'd be the contractor fee plus the $100, $150 admin fee. What is, what is that? I know what it is. But I know, but I don't know. What is it? It's a contractor fee for an admin fee on the housing abatement. Well, just, what really is that? just a clarification. Um, for years, there's just been a code enforcement fee listed in the fee schedule, um, and the public health nuisance and the minimum housing administration fee <coughs> is the same price. So we felt that we should reduce the public health nuisance. So since we had to kind of call out the public health nuisance fee, we needed to separate the minimum housing. These are fees that already are being done. One is to, um, the administration fee is for staff to process the case. And then the contractor fee is if um, we abate. It's the cost to, a, to abate a case. So whatever the contractor's fee is, is plus $150. Mm -hmm. What does the contractor usually run? Do you got any average? Um, it really just varies on the for this, is, we kind of use it as high grass for the, the size of the lot, um, how high the grass is, anywhere from 125 to if it's a, a junk, a junkyard where we have to clean out a bunch, it's been thousands sometimes. Okay. Just varies. Thank you, ma'am. Are these fees for, um, not punitive, but, um, I can't see reducing a fee when we're having, maybe the other fee needs to be adjusted. Um, well, the reason we chose to reduce the public health nuisance fee, because a minimum housing case is a lot more in detail to process, and then surrounding communities were kind of similar in the $75 range versus $150. <clears throat> okay. What, what, what is that? bring in a year what is the just close i'm not sure it just depends on if they're they're paid they go to liens on the property okay. uh, the building standard fee changes are proposed as uh, adding the following fees uh, they wanted to add a separate line for kiosks uh, would require an $85 permit fee. Uh, third revision up to issuance of a permit, $150 per revision, and add clarifying language to delineate that um, land inspections after, after hours inspections, uh, temporary certificates of occupancy, and plan review fees are not subject to the technology fee. Uh, we added the technology fee last year on um, it as a surcharge on a lot of our permits to afford uh, the payments on the blue beam software. <laughs> Planning and community development. Included or recommended is $150,000 towards implementation of the Concord Area Master Plan. Is that 
Is that going to be added to what we already got in there? Or? It is. This will make the total funding after this uh, contribution $650,000. Uh, the total ask was for $300,000. That's why you see it again down in the exclude or delay. Uh, we funded half of the request. And we also delayed a new planner position that was requested. Have you got a planner position opening or you just add one? Wanted to add one, uh, but we did not. The police department. Of course, the new police department building uh, was recommended for construction. The next item, additional ammunition for live training scenarios. Uh, this allows training in a variety of live scenarios to teach the officers to be effective, safe, and professional. That was recommended. Um, with all of the new officers and just due to vacancies and retirement, we need to increase the uniform budget. How much is these going up from what to what? It just shows how much you want to increase it. Yeah, but it don't say what it goes from to what. Yeah, I this is instance, just the increase. The increased amount. uniform budget to 24000 How much was it before? So are we going up $2 or 20000 Yeah, we're going up 24000 I know, but uh, the, paper, how much was it before? So we don't know how much we're going up. Yeah, I don't have all the line item details here, but. You know, you know I don't if you're spending twenty-two thousand, needs more. That's one thing. If you're spending ten thousand, need fourteen thousand more with the same amount. I'm, I, and I'm not picking on just one. I'm gonna ask about these others also. Mm -hmm. And when we distribute, <coughs> um, well, we distribute totals. The total budget for uniforms right now is fifty-six thousand. How much? Well, it's 51000 was the original budget for FY18. Uh, Chief Barnes already transferred money in to co co cover a shortfall. Uh, so he's adjusted it up to 56000 but he's requesting that that total budget be 75000 for next year uh, just because he can't afford to outfit his entire force. He's already running into shortages this year. And these are the type of things that when we meet with the departments in March, um, you know, we dissect all of this reasoning and rationale uh, before Larry makes the recommendation. Uh, the training budget uh, was also recommended for an increase. Uh, we have several officers on state boards and this also helps ready our officers for duty and increase op operating budget. This is just for office supplies and day-to-day -day needs. Uh, they just are running out of money. They have a lot of people to uh, keep up with. We did recommend to delay uh, personnel positions. Uh, requested was a crime scene technician and two part-time police officers. And we did deny the increase to the general supply budget. What is a general supply budget? When I looked, the operating and the general seem to have similar type charges in both of them. Uh, it's just day-to-day -day needs. So if what you did is took the general supply budget and add ten thousand dollars to it. Correct. Combine it to one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, in essence, he needed an extra twenty-five, and we gave him ten. Okay. Um, fire department. We've recommended the temporary facility as discussed last week at the strategic meeting. Uh, this 280,000 includes the temporary housing, the apparatus building, and the furnishings for the temporary housing. The next item is- Is that, is that 280,000 in this budget? In FY19, we took okay. that from that fund balance. How much are you gonna phase in in three years? I think you said you're gonna phase this in in three years. 
No, uh, no sir. I, my recommendation was a 10 year plan. Well, I, yeah, well, I heard the 10 year too, but I thought y'all went to three, but you 10. Uh, but Ch Chief Fowler's Chief. interested in three. I'm, I'm proposing a 10 year, basic 10 year. We'll probably meet somewhere in the middle, but uh, but going forward, I'm looking at uh, trying to make it work over a 10 year period. So looking at uh, uh, bricks and mortar one year, equipment the following year, staffing the third year. So okay. cycling through those three areas on roughly a three year basis over the next 10 years. Okay. Uh, we recommended station number five, uh, the fire alarm and sprinkler system at that facility. Uh, recommended for replacement of fire engine number five. This will be funded through an installment financing. Uh, we're currently financing uh, fire engines and large equipment over 10 years to help defray that cost, that one time big hit. We're replacing self-contained breathing apparatus. This is uh, for a total of 58 replacements. That five hundred and forty-six thousand. <clears throat> We've added uh, professional development, uh, higher education incentive. Um, we've added twenty-five thousand. The total request was seventy-five thousand. Uh, this is just to incentivize uh, folks in the fire department uh, obtaining degrees in higher education. We're funding the purchase of hydraulic rescue tools. This is a cutter and a spreader to enhance rescue capabilities. Uh, we're adding standby pay for an on-call investigator that was previously omitted. Uh, station alerting system for emergency call notification. Uh, that system is gonna be here at station one. Uh, it's the last station to convert and it allows uh, transmission from 911 to staff through the 800 megahertz system. And the last item there that we're recommending is a contract with the Center for Public Safety Excellence for administration on a community-driven strategic plan. This is part of the accreditation requirements. Which one is that? That very last one, the fifteen thousand one hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah, Energy driven strategic 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 plan, whatever that word is. <laughs> and that's for what? This is a contract with the Center for Public Safety Excellence to develop that strategic plan. What, what it, I, think that's I, it. I know what it is, but tell me what it is. Can you give a little bit more background? This is the uh, SIPSI group that comes in and does the strategic plan for us. They help us develop it. With, um, we do our stakeholders, internal stakeholders, as well as the community. Um, got people come in and we do the develop what the plan is going to look like for the next five years. And then they help us write the plan. And then, of course, that's brought back to you. Okay. This will be our third time using them under the accreditation process to do this. All right. On the next section, items that were excluded and or delayed, the fire administration renovation project. Um, as discussed last week, we just can't do all the projects at one time. We hope to revisit that in the next couple of years. <clears throat> uh, we don't have funding for a live fire training burn building at this time. Fire station number three renovation. Uh, there was uh, some position requests. Uh, we are moving forward with the safer grant application as discussed last week though. Um, a pickup truck for emergency and general use uh, was excluded. And some other various uh, equipment. <clears throat> Simulator, a sign. Any questions on any of those items? Information technology. 
uh, quite a few uh, needed items there. The biggest one is the data center backup power, uh, 160,000. It's just time. The, the current one that we're using is six years old. Uh, if it fails, be in big trouble. That's a, a real need. Um, we need tier two storage. This is at our disaster recovery site at Energy Services. We're also replacing 100 telephones for the heaviest users as we're seeing some failures with the current ones that we're using. We'll start to phase in some replacements. Uh, a blade server refresh. This is to maintain network reliability. Uh, backup storage expansion. A cable certifier. This is a piece of equipment that allows us to certify network cable and test the speed the data is moving through the cable at. Uh, we've got an increase in Microsoft Enterprise Agreement. In we have to stay compliant with the laws. Uh, number storage maintenance. This is the main network storage system. Uh, so we want to keep that running and fiber splicing equipment to repair broken fiber links. Parks and Recreation uh, included in next year's recommendation is uh, replacements of fencing at various parks and facilities. Uh, we've done this for the past few years and we've uh, just been replacing sections of fence that are falling down or damaged. Um, we're going to be developing the site plan for Belk Tonawanda Park entrance. Uh, the fruit stand will be coming down soon, uh, so we want to get the, the site plan started to uh, develop that as a new entrance. Concrete steps at Don Griffin Park. Um, we also have bleachers and tra trash receptacles. Uh, recommended for the share at that park as well. Uh, signage for new parks. These have the new logo. They're the new game that we've been putting up all over town. Uh, an increase in vehicle maintenance. They've just we've been running short the past three years. The past two years. Uh, this is for the parks division. Uh, we have excluded or recommended to delay Sunset Park renovations. Uh, replacement of the roof at Dickerson Gym. Uh, we're just going to try and stretch it maybe one more year there. And the control link on the bathrooms at Cruft Park. <coughs> These schedule changes, uh, we've recommended uh, to change the athletic field rates for Previously in the fee schedule, they were listed in there where you, the rentals were in two-hour blocks. We're going to change that to an hourly block. And uh, the shelter rental for Sutton Park, we want to combine that with the uh, meeting room rental due to the lack of outdoor restrooms. If you separate the two, then you know somebody's left without a facility. Uh, so we're adding uh, full-day and half-day amounts in there for that. Um, we're also going to add language for uh, neighborhood homeowners associations to be allowed to utilize the neighborhood centers and parks twice a year free of charge. Uh, this was discussed at the General Services Committee. The city's golf course. Uh, we have recommended for inclusion, pro shop carpet replacement and paint. There's paint in there as well. Um, and replacing the top dresser, green spiller, and green smeller, obviously all to care for the, the course. We are recommending some fee schedule changes, increase in membership fees. Uh, the annual passes go up about $120 per year, and the monthly passes will go up about $10 per month. Any questions there? So I've been running how much a year? In revenue? On annual green patches and in the individuals. It's $120 a year. 
Uh, yeah, well, this fee increase will generate about $600 more a year. I guess this is based on how many passes we currently have that are annual for those types of... That's correct. Most of our for paintbrush, so that's why we see a much more large increase for red wheel than paintbrush. That's just broken out to show the different categories of membership we have. Okay. Um, how much increase is that from, from the... Previous year, it's going to hundred. It's, it's going up hundred and twenty dollars annually, regardless of how they pay. It'll be hundred twenty dollars. These are ten dollars a month. So it's going up hundred and twenty dollars. How much is an individual fee now? Is it going? Is that going to hurt her? It's, it's not going to hurt. We're still being the ballpark of the other forces in the area. But right now, what we're doing is we have an uh, individual room fee pass for a city resident uh, for an individual with thousands. Okay. And our biggest competitor we consider to be Eagle Chase right now, Sombridge doesn't even have membership anymore. Uh, they stopped doing membership several years ago. They do like a discount pass. You play so many times and you get a discount on people around. Uh, with Legal Chase, we're going to be about $10 more a month. $5 on the rest. About $10, $15. And we really feel like that all the improvements that we've made at the golf course, continue to increase operating costs at the golf course, uh, this is something that, you know, that the membership can sustain. So that's $120 a month for family. Yes, yeah, $120 across the board. For a year. Yeah, for yeah it's $10 per month. On every category, we just added $10 a month. Okay. Okay. Aquatics and Fitness Center. I included or recommended. Are some personnel changes. Uh, we're adding an assistant aquatics director uh, part-time, 30 hours a week, to assist with management of the aquatics department and oversee maintenance of the pool and the water park. We're also adding a facility maintenance worker one to handle the increased demands for maintenance throughout the facility. Um, we're resurfacing the indoor pool. Uh, this needs to be done about every eight to 10 years and it's time to do it. Uh, we're increasing the building maintenance budget. Uh, it's been running short the last couple of years. Uh, we feel that that will meet our needs. And we're also increasing the small equipment budget. Uh, this is where we buy exercise equipment and we are adding some uh, machines to the uh, to the mix. Uh, day camp has increased expenses. The day camp also generates its own revenue. So the revenue generated for the day camp actually offsets this expenditure. And pool maintenance is costing more. Uh, we need to increase that budget as well. Um, one thing to note about Monroe Aquatics and Fitness Center, um, this fund is separate from the general fund. It generates all of its own revenue. It is self-sustaining, and it is able to uh, afford all of these operating cost increases without any raises, just based on the current uh, membership revenue that it brings in. Uh, we do run all of this through a business model and make sure that it's all sustainable uh, going forward for five years. Any questions on the Aquatic Center? Downtown Monroe. Included, uh, we have included and recommended uh, funding for the Five Points Gateway Demolition. I put Science Center down there to kind of key us in, but in the area of the Science Center. Uh, that's those two buildings that we purchased that are in the same parking lot with the Science Center. Uh, we're going to include this in part of the installment financings that we'll be doing for the Science Center, uh, Senior Center, um, Center Theater. Uh, that way we could spread the cost of this demolition work 
out. Uh, we didn't feel like we wanted to hit fund balance for that entire half a million dollars. Um, we're also recommending wayfinding signs, uh, phase two. This will be the location plan. Uh, so it will uh, hire an outside company to pretty much map out citywide where the location of all the signs will be. And uh, then we can come back and, and go from there once we get that laid out. Any questions on that? Uh, excluded uh, downtown furniture, the master plan, just next to a really high price tickets, the roundabout, the one-way street conversion, and that's just the design and improvements to the Morgan Windsor Alley. <clears throat> Any idea where we can look at some of those that have been excluded, like the roundabout and the uh, one-way street conversion? <clears throat> that roundabout, is that not a state thing? I thought we, we'd probably need participation from the state in both of those. Because the one-way conversion involves Franklin, which is state road, and Jefferson, which is city, and then Lancaster and Old Charlotte or state. So it would be a joint effort. Um, but as anything else, I think the state's in the same position we are in all likelihood. Yeah, I thought the state would build that over there on Lancaster Avenue, Charlotte Avenue, if they wanted with a million, a million hundred one ninety two million one hundred ninety one thousand dollars. We probably, from a staff level, we probably wouldn't propose uh, any type of funding for the roundabout or the one way street conversion in the absence of DOT participation. The uh, Morgan Windsor Alley improvements, I, I didn't see where we had the, the funding available to, to pursue that this year. Mm -hmm. Probably that would be the same answer for the next one or two fiscal years that we will be planning for this time next year and uh, two years from now. Uh, once we get a little more bandwidth, if you will, um, getting uh, the police proposed police department under construction, senior center under construction, uh, uh, center theater and science center under construction and, and see how the cash flows are working. Project like that. You know, it's not that it's not needed, but funding is, is you know, I, I feel pretty constrained and there's other projects that have been on the table uh -huh. for a year or two crowd would have crowded out that type of project. Okay. Stormwater. Uh, this is an enterprise fund. Uh, much like the Aquatic Center, it generates its own revenue from our stormwater fees. Uh, everything that we do within the stormwater fund is self-supported. Uh, we do a business model and it is self-sustaining uh, going out five years. Uh, we have recommended uh, the first two uh, are water quality improvement, design and construction. This is the next phase of the water quality improvement program. Uh, this is in that Stewart Creek watershed. Uh, we've recommended the addition of a stormwater engineering uh, tech. This will be to maintain uh, the database, assist with data field collection, field data collection, and assist with the issuance of the city stormwater permit. They would like to purchase the pipe inspection robot. This is actually a TV camera that will inspect the storm drains. Uh, currently, they rely on the water department, and it creates a delay for the citizens. So uh, they'd like to purchase their own TV camera. We've we have recommended that. And an engineering study for drainage concerns. Any questions on stormwater? Water and Sewer Fund. Uh, the largest project by far on there is that Richard Creek Outfall Rehab. Uh, this is for a sewer main. Uh, it's the oldest in the city system, and it's constructed <coughs> out of clay pipe, and it's just near the end of its useful life. Uh, and this will replace that piping. 
The next item is land options for industrial park number three. Um, the fund balance in the electric fund is tied up. We've made a large property purchase that we're uh, holding some land for future economic development. And we'd like to utilize some of the fund balance out of the water fund uh, to do the same thing. Um, if you have any questions about industrial park three, I think Chris may be able to help us with that. Sorry, any question, uh, industrial park three, do we have a site or? We have a targeted piece of property And this will be for some land options. The, what this includes is money just to do like an appraisal or any kind of preliminary work that would need to be done before we'd purchase that piece of property. Uh, utility relocations, when they rebuild the, the interchange at Highway 601 and 74, we'll need to move our utilities out of the way. Uh, there's several different increases on uh, initiatives. Uh, one to note, the increased testing for taste and odor control is, is to improve uh, the, the result you know, from our customer, the response from our customer. Uh, any questions on any of the projects in there? On the next page, this is also water and sewer fund. Uh, fee schedule changes. We are proposing uh, water and sewer rate increases of 3.2%. This is pursuant to the 15 year rate model that Russ had presented last year. Um, we are banking a lot of this money that is all of the money that is collected by these rate increases to be able to afford a huge wastewater treatment plant project that the city is planning out in the year 2029, 2030. Um, we'll need a combination of cash and uh, financing to be able to afford that project. Um, we're gearing up for that from now. Uh, this is banking the cash portion of it. Uh, we're also proposing uh, increases for administrative and non-construction fees by 1.91%. Uh, it's based on the consumer price index. And we're proposing increases for construction relating, related fees. These include the capacity fees. Uh, Russ had presented this at the strategic meeting last week. Uh, this increase will be at 2.92% uh, per the construction cost index. A full list of all of the rates and individual fee charges as an agenda manager. Uh, it's, there's a whole uh, fee schedule changes document. All the fee schedules will be uh, proposed for adoption on the May 1st agenda. How's these fees? And I asked every year, how are we stacking up with cities our size on these, on these fees, Russ, please? Sure, Mayor. On the rates, water and sewer rates, the last benchmark we did, which is the League of Municipalities benchmark, we were 75th lowest out of 421 on water. So we're down below the 20th percentile, which is great. Sewer, we were 98th lowest out of 363. So still we're down the bottom quarter uh, when you're looking at uh, 360 to 400 uh, systems across the state. Some of them are smaller than us, some of them are bigger. Uh, so we're, we're, we stack up really nice on the, uh, the, the monthly bill benchmarking. Uh, Councilman, because I asked about the capacity fees and how we stacked up last week, and we gave you a little bit. We're a little higher, but we're still in that middle group of the cities we shared with you last week. So overall, doing very well benchmarking, particularly on the, the monthly bills that go to our customers. So. Electric fund. <clears throat> uh, the first item up there is uh, funding for contract labor. Uh, that is the, the largest item on the list. Uh, 
This, these are forces uh, to construct electric infrastructure to new uh, customers. This supplements our city forces. Um, we were using it uh, to help our staff um, just in the day-to-day -day because we did not have a full staff. As of yesterday, we are fully staffed. So I'm glad to say that. Uh, we'll still need to catch up on a backlog of work, so we will need to budget for uh, some of these expenditures in next fiscal year, uh, get that help from that contract labor to get up where we need to be. I think a good one to note, uh, subdivision infrastructure construction. These are for new uh, subdivisions. Uh, we have lots of lots that will be coming on, and you know, these are expenditures that will only pay us back through user fees. Uh, we'll be making all those new connections and providing infrastructure to reach those new homes. Uh, same with installation and maintain the fiber optic network. This is uh, city expansion and corporate center expansion. Uh, we've got to spend money to, to get out to these new places that we've added. Uh, we are adding a person in this division. It'll be a new electric substation technician. Uh, this will be just to perform testing and maintenance on substations. <clears throat> a notable in engineering study to provide supplemental power. Uh, we're looking for a more efficient way to purchase XX, as, yeah, <laughs> excuse me, excess power over what power agency provides. Uh, it's a nice initiative that we're working on. Any questions on any of the items on that list? Uh, I'd like to ask uh, one. What about how do we compare with Duke Power on the uh, increased commercial accounts? Sorry, Carol, what? I was just wondering how we compare with our increase with Duke Power. Well, we're not increasing our electric rates. Duke Power is right now looking at uh, they've got full utilities commission on that, and they have a half percent rate increase. And they should get notice of that in the next uh, couple of weeks as to where they How much the 11.5% increase are going to be? Um, I haven't looked specifically at our rates compared to Duke's. We're still slightly higher than them. But as they get more increases and we keep things steady, we'll, uh, we'll catch up to you. Thanks. They don't catch up to us, I guess. Well said. Uh, some more equipment purchases on this sli slide that have been recommended. And again, we, we run a rate model with electric. Uh, we do projections into the future. We use that business model to make sure that all of our utilities uh, project to stay solvent uh, through the upcoming years. All of our funds are performing very well. Uh, we are proposing fee schedule change, a renewable energy portfolio. This is required by NCMPA. This is a pass-through cost. It's also required by North Carolina law. Uh, this is going up. We have no control over this. And uh, down on the bottom, those are renewable energy credits. And uh, we we're just adding uh, different ones that were not in the fee schedule into the fee schedule. I think that was it for electric. Any questions on electric? <coughs> Natural gas. Uh, the very first one is uh, purchase of liquefied natural gas for the liquefied natural gas plant startup. Uh, the plant has begun construction. Uh, Don, when will that be complete? Can you give it us? Should be ready by, uh, by the end of the year. Uh, December 25. Okay. Uh, and then we'll have That's great. Moving along. Um, 
The next three are relocation of natural gas lines uh, for road improvements. Got the widening at US 74 and Rocky River, the US 74 Highway 601 interchange, and then also along 74. Does the state pay us some of that money back? Did they change the law something down in Raleigh a couple of years ago that they going to pay us to do that? Yes, sir. And so in, uh, if we were in a five easement, they would, they would pay for the relocation. In these cases were in, in the existing road by the way. Okay, so they don't help. They don't help us move that. Again, subdivision infrastructure construction. Uh, this is to meet, reach our new customers. Uh, we'll get this money back at some point. Uh, the next big ticket item down the list is that distribution integrity management program. Uh, this is required by DOT. Uh, we have to comply with this program. But this program uh, mandates that we have to constantly evaluate risks, remediation, and possible replacement of our existing facilities. And I know we spend a lot of time uh, making sure that we are in compliance, and it's reassuring to know that we have this all in place. Uh, Revenue-based expansions are expansions where we have lines where we're just adding customers that maybe want to convert to gas. Any questions on natural gas? Uh, no fee schedule changes. Oh, well, wait, we have some cleanup uh, in their uh, fee schedule. No rate increases. However, we are changing the amount of uh, service line that we will install at no cost from 1,000 feet to 500 feet. And under the natural gas water heat heater rebate program, uh, we're just clarifying that the customer to be eligible for this rebate needs to have had all of the applicable permits and inspections. We currently follow that, but it doesn't say that in the fee schedule, and we're just adding it. And Charlotte Monroe Executive Airport. Uh, the first item that we have uh, included or recommended uh, for funding is fuel system component replacements. These are simply hoses on our refueling trucks. And ground communication equipment. This is the radio equipment that allows us to communicate with Charlotte, Douglas, the <laughs> Charlotte Douglas International Airport. Um, this equipment is currently failing. We have recommended to delay uh, those next three items, the awning, the self-service terminal components, uh, the lighting fixture replacements. And there are some adjustments to the fee schedule uh, down our fuel rates. We've added more tiers to the volume discounts for base customers. Uh, this will allow us to offer more incentives for larger fuel volume purchases. Uh, monthly release rates. Uh, we've just streamlined the multiple sizes of helicopters and we're just gonna offer one bulk rate for any size helicopter, any particular kind of helicopter. And line service fees. Uh, we are spelling out uh, call out or late arrival. We're doing it at $25 per 15 minute interval with a minimum of $100. Uh, we're changing the ground power unit fees, similar charge uh, per 15 minutes, $12.50 though, a minimum charge of 50 bucks. The battery jump start fee. Twelve fifty for fifteen minutes with a minimum of fifty dollars, and we're adding a cold weather preheat fee. Uh, this fee will just be a flat twenty five dollars, and we're adding an aircraft ramp fee. Uh, this will only be for aircraft that are non based at our airport and that weigh more than twelve thousand five hundred pounds. This fee will be a flat hundred dollars. 
It should add that that fee is for airplanes that do not take any other services. It's just coming in land drop off. Any questions on the airport? We have moved pretty quick tonight. Um, we will have a presentation of the budget message at the next meeting. We will adopt the fee schedule, as I mentioned, at the next meeting, which is on May 1st. And we'll call for the public hearing, which will be held on June 5th at 6 p.m. to adopt our budget. Is there anything else that you would like to bring up or discuss about the fiscal year 19 budget? Any questions about updates on anything? We've got a full cast of different departments available at your disposal. Dinner won't be ready for about another, it's here. Well, I don't care. We'll give them all 30 minutes, tell them why they need all of this, each one. We had 30 minutes time ever have me that. <laughs> yeah, about 12 tonight, wouldn't we? <laughs> I don't even know if we'd make it. <laughs> just, just <again>. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. We may make a celebrity it. in here. You know that, Lucy. We, yes, we do. Yeah, we got twinkle toes. Yeah, right. That's right. We need a soft shoe demonstration. We do. <laughs> the shoes are hung up. <laughs> I got a pair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were hoping for a little entertainment tonight. Does the council have any questions or comments? You're done. I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Have a motion to adjourn. I have a second. Second. All in favor? We adjourn. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>